Hey guys, it's me, Shlee. Welcome back for another MRE video. Today, as you can see, we have a very special guest. This is Canadian IMP menu number 19, Beef Ravioli. Some of you guys may not recognize him. This is actually the new IMP packaging. They were going for the whole pull tab deal with the brown bags, but they decided to scrap that and go with just plain old Ziploc bags because as we know, these are just superior. I'm totally kidding. So this is, this is Canadian IMP menu number 19. Here is the actual package that it came in. The reason it is out of the package currently is because when this arrived, and I should mention, this was sent to me by the one and only Mike Kreischer from Mike Kreischer Reviews here on YouTube. So thank you, Mike. So we had a little mishap when we were opening this, we being me and my sister, she was helping me. And I'm gonna put a little clip in of that on the screen right here so you guys can see what happened. If you'd rather skip it, just skip to this timestamp right here. Hey guys, it's me, Shlee. Here's a little bonus clip for you. So I just got a package from Mike Kreischer here on YouTube. And one of the contents was this Canadian IMP menu number 20, beef ravioli. And my sister was helping me open the package by stabbing it with her X-Acto knife. And she accidentally sliced through the back of this package. And it looks like she sliced through the sliced apples that are in here. We've got apple juice running down the package. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up and eat it now so it doesn't go to waste and so you guys can still get my opinion. All right, yep, here's the package. Sliced apples. <laughs> it's so drippy. Everything else in here I think is good, so I'm gonna just set that to the side and that'll be in an actual ration review for y'all. All right, let me wash the apple juice off my hands really quick. Here's an up close shot of the apple slices. They look really good. They lost some juice when they were stabbed, but overall there's still a good amount in there and they're perfectly fresh because this just happened a few minutes ago. I will say I'm super glad I figured that out now and not after that ration had been sitting in my ration stash for you know a week or two because that would not be a pretty mess to clean up. As for Amber who sliced the package, I think I'm gonna forgive her, but you guys tell me down below what you think I should do. Let's go in for a taste test. I already threw away the packaging, so I didn't get a chance to read the ingredients, but I think these are just sliced apples with some sugary juice on them. They kind of taste like peaches. It actually has a little bit of a crunch to it. I don't know if you guys can hear that when I'm biting into it. Yeah, it has some crunch. It's not mushy at all. There's no spices in here that I can tell. No cinnamon or anything like that, but it's a really good sliced apple treat. There's even a piece right here. Still has some of the peel on it. You guys see that? That's cool. These are not a sour apple either. They're quite sweet. Definitely no Granny Smith-ness going on here. You guys know I'm not a huge fan of applesauce. I really like this as an alternative though. Okay, well that's all for this episode of Unexpected with Schlee. Tune back in next time because I'm sure this will happen again. Basically what happened is my sister was opening the box with an X-Acto knife and she sliced through the back of the package for this IMP and she also sliced through a package of sliced apples and the juice got all over everything so I had to transfer all the goodies to a Ziploc and I had to eat the apples right then and there but they were really good so I was fine with that. So we don't really need this packaging but just for fun The pull tab and the Ziploc seal works great for anybody who wanted to know. All right, so that's all I have to say as far as an introduction for this video. So let's go ahead, open this up and see what happens. There's kind of some sneak peeks because you guys can see through this bag. The first thing we have is our Canadian IMP Spork, pretty standard. This one, as you can see, is in beaver brown. Some of the stuff in here is still sticky because it has apple juice residue on it. We're just gonna work through that. We've got a Wonder Bar from Cadbury. I've never heard of these. A peanut butter caramel experience. Well, that sounds pretty good. 
This is best before 2020, but I'm sure there's plenty of sugar in this to keep it good for like 30 years after that. This is probably gonna be delicious. I love peanut butter and I love caramel as well. And I'm guessing there's chocolate on this also. We'll find out. We have some almonds and chocolate covered coffee beans, okay? These sound pretty good. I don't drink coffee. As y'all know, I don't like coffee flavor very much. The chocolate should help with that. I like almonds, but it would be cool if the almonds were chocolate covered also, because I do love chocolate covered almonds. These though have a nice vacuum seal. They should be really fresh. We have two orange sports drink beverage powders. We also have some barbecue beef jerky. I've had this one other time. I had this in my first Canadian IMP. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link up above. And this is good jerky. We've got a book of matches. The classic Nescafe is sweet and creamy, which for anybody who loves coffee, is always a treat, I've heard. We've got raspberry jam and fortified creamy peanut butter, both from Thermal Pack down in Stone Mountain, Georgia. These are really sticky. These are by far the stickiest things I've touched so far. We have our Canadian IMP hamburger bun, standard. The most precious pack of Tic Tacs. And last but not, oh wait, hold on, got ahead of myself. We've also got a pack of Tabasco right here. The Magic Expanding Napkin. And our main, which is beef ravioli. The date code on that is 20066, which I think means this is from 2020 and it's the 66th day of 2020 when this was packaged. I think I got that right. There is no FRH. I believe those are distributed separately with IMPs. So to heat this up, I'm gonna go put it onto boil. So I'll be right back. The main is heating up. I brought back a wet towel from my kitchen so I can clean this off along with the peanut butter because these are just so sticky. I don't want my hands to be totally sticky for this ration. All right, we'll let those dry. In the meantime, let's go ahead and open up these almonds and coffee beans. I'm very curious about these. Oh, I love the way they look. You guys see that? It's like happy trail mix. So definitely more almonds than the coffee beans, which I'm totally okay with. I'm gonna try an almond by itself first. The almonds are lightly salted and they're good. They have absorbed a lot of coffee flavor. They taste very strongly of coffee in my opinion. Not a bad coffee flavor. And again, if you like coffee, that'll be perfect for you. But I just was not expecting that. Okay, let's try one of these coffee beans. And I assume this is milk chocolate. It didn't say it was dark. The chocolate is very good. And the coffee bean is very strong. It's also very crunchy. I'm not sure if the camera picked that up, but it kind of startled me when I bit into it, the coffee bean, because it was so crunchy. I've never eaten a coffee bean before, so I wasn't expecting that. The chocolate on these is very thick, especially in comparison to the coffee bean. I'm going to try and bite this in half so you guys can see the cross section. Okay, I sort of ended up peeling the chocolate off of this with my teeth. But you can see, there's the coffee bean. And it's got a lot of chocolate on it, a lot of chocolate. So verdict on the almonds and chocolate covered coffee beans. It was not as terrible as I thought it might be. The almonds and the chocolate on the beans, I do like. Let me try those together, actually. Dynamic duo. Mm. 
mixing these together is definitely the way to go. Strangely, the almond and chocolate, when it's eaten together, sort of overrides the coffee flavor. The chocolate on these is really soft also, it melts very quickly. It makes for a nice experience along with the crunchy-ish almonds and the really crunchy coffee beans. You get different textures along with the different flavors. This would be a great high energy snack, easy to eat on the go, perfect. Next, let's mix up one of these drinks. I'm gonna go for just one since they are the same. So in my Germs MRE mug, let's put one of these packs of powder. What does this even say? You're supposed to use 250 milliliters of water, but we're gonna use however much I put in this cup. This kind of smells like coffee too, but that might be just me imagining things. mix it up with our spork. This water is cold. I'm not sure if that's having an effect on the dissolving. It seems like this is taking a little bit longer than usual to dissolve. All right, I'm gonna set that aside and let it finish doing its thing. And in the meantime, how about we make a PB&J? You guys know I like my Canadian IMP PB&J. I made one in my first IMP video as well. This bun wasn't cut all the way, so I did have to mangle it a little bit, but it's still gonna taste good. Also, this one's also really dark. Are the buns usually this dark, or is it just like I got two that are kind of fluky? Let me know. I'm gonna quickly knead the peanut butter. Okay, we should be safe to open this now. All right, it's time for some art. I call it abstract. Now it's time for some a raspberry jam. Okay, art class is over. Time to get down to business. Oh, it's upside down. That's uncomfortable. I fixed it. Let's go ahead and have a bite. It's good. As far as PB&Js go, this is really top tier. You've got the sweet and creamy peanut butter. The raspberry jam has such a nice tartness that pairs perfectly with that peanut butter. The consistency is good. They both blend really well together. The jam does have a few little I don't want to use the word chunks, but it does have pieces of fruit in it, which isn't unpleasant necessarily. It adds a little bit of texture. It makes it kind of hard to squeeze out of the packet, but it's not a big deal. The only thing I can think of to improve this would be to cut the sandwich in half diagonally, because as we know, PB&Js taste better when you cut them like that. But this one tastes pretty good as it is. For anybody who's wondering, the bun, your standard hamburger bun, anything you can pick up at the store, this is exactly what this tastes like. Nothing special, but it's the perfect vehicle for peanut butter and jelly. Let's try our orange drink. I actually expected this to taste a lot stronger because of the amount of powder I put in here. I was sure I put more powder than was necessary for this amount of water. This tastes quite light. It does taste of orange, but it's a much lighter orange flavor than a lot of drinks are. The color too might be a little bit lighter, more on the yellow side. But it's your typical orange sports drink, like watered down Gatorade type flavor. I would say it's more on the tart side too than on the sweet side. 
but it's good. So far, I like the orange flavor combination with the other flavors in here. I think that was a good choice. Now let's work on opening this beef jerky. If y'all watched my previous IMP video, you know this took me forever to open. So let's try it now and see if I can get this done a little bit faster. I'm gonna have to cut this. It's just, this plastic is quite thick. And it's just, I don't have the strength in my hands to open this. As soon as you cut it open, you can smell that beef jerky flavor and it's delicious. Even once you cut it, it's hard to rip this. So they really package this well. Okay, we're finally in. So here is our beef jerky. So this does have a sort of a sauce on it, or it might just be the grease from the jerky itself. Just a light coating. Really smells of barbecue, like I mentioned earlier. I honestly don't remember if the first one I had smelled that strongly of barbecue, but this one does. As for the taste, the taste is good. The chewing is a little difficult. But I heard recently from Yeti Nether, Yeti Nether if you're watching, hello, that really chewy beef jerky like that is really good in some cases because it gives your mouth something to do while you're on, say, a long march. So you have the beef jerky to chew on and it takes up time, which I definitely think this would take up time. This is a pretty tough beef jerky. You can kind of bend it and break it, but it's it pretty it stands up pretty well. Yeah, this, this smells more of barbecue than it tastes of barbecue. I will say it has a pretty good spice to it. Sort of a subtle heat. It really sort of burns the back of my tongue more than anything. The jerky itself has a very pleasant sweet smokiness to it. Definitely barbecue flavored. And that little kick of heat really turns it up a notch. It's, it's a very good combination. And this is another really good high protein snack. You can eat this on the go, no worries. Your hands might be a little bit greasy, but that's okay. Nobody minds greasy hands. Okay, the last thing we have to open before I go and grab my main is this Wonder Bar. Again, never heard of this, but I have high hopes for it. Okay, so I was right. There is chocolate apparent on the bar. And this is... And this is really squishy. Can you guys see this? How squishy it is? I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like that. I would assume yes. Um, I'm okay with that though because I love this texture of food. I'm not going to eat that yet. I'm going to save that for my dessert. But I am excited to get to that. So let's get the main eaten so we can try that. All right, here she is. And she is flaming hot. Ow. Ah. Ouch. All right, let's try and get this open. Mmm, smells so good. You can smell that beef already. Can you guys see the steam rising off of that? There's a shot of the inside. Let's put it on the tray though, so you can actually see it. That pouch was so hot. I think I suffered third degree burns on some of my fingers, but for an MRE, anything is worth it. Okay, so this looks really good. I was expecting more sauce, but there's actually not as much sauce. As you guys can see, there's little beef crumbles in here, along with the actual raviolis. And these are your standard rectangular ones. This is so hot. I really should have let this cool more. But for an MRE, I will sacrifice my taste buds. This 
is still screaming hot, but I want to try it. So here we go. Mm -hmm. This tastes like it has some cheese in it, which is really good. I would check the ingredients, but as you guys saw, the pouch was destroyed, so I can't do that. But I, I would guess this has cheese in it based on the flavor alone. And the tomato sauce has quite a bit of spice in it, actually. I was not expecting that, but maybe I should have been because my last IMP pizza pasta, which I feel like I'm referencing every five minutes, was spicy. That one made sense though, it had a spicy sausage in it. Not that this doesn't make sense for it to be spicy, just wasn't expecting it. Other than the spice though, I will say the tomato sauce is kind of bland. I would add some salt to this, but they didn't give me any. It's not bad, just I think it could use a little bit of salt. That spice is a really nice touch. The beef crumbles also have a really good flavor, nice and beefy as you would expect. I'm not getting a lot of Italian herb flavor or anything like that. Just spicy tomato beefy goodness, which you really can't go wrong with. So me being me and having the baby levels of spice tolerance that I have, normally I would not add any Tabasco or hot sauce to this, but for science, for you guys, I will do this. So here's our Tabasco. And this does have salt in it, so maybe that will solve our salt problem. All right, I've got some of that on there. I'm gonna have to take that out. I sound way too country. All right, there's some Tabasco on there. Got that really strong vinegar smell. I'm not sure how the vinegar is gonna pair with this, but. In about two seconds, we're going to find out. So I, I do like the added spice of the Tabasco. I do actually like that as far as the flavor profile. I don't think the vinegar flavor goes super well with the ravioli flavor though. So I would probably not add more Tabasco. But what I did add, I'm going to enjoy. Okay, that's the ticket. I put a little bit of Tabasco on and mixed it up in about half of this. That's the right, that's the right combination. The salt really helps this dish in my opinion, the salt from the Tabasco. And then that little extra kick of pepper brings it up a notch. And that actually really livens up the tomato sauce too. It makes it much more flavorful. It does still have a vinegar kick. It's not as strong as if you were just to pour the Tabasco on a single ravioli and eat that. The pasta itself also helps to mellow out the spiciness. The pasta is really soft, almost creamy in the texture. And it's just plain pasta, so it sort of absorbs some of that spicy flavor and tones it down. I'm a big fan of this one. So far to me, it's just as good as the pizza pasta. And it's very similar. Obviously, it's an Italian beef dish and some of the components are the same, like the beef jerky and the PB&J. Slight variations, but overall very similar. I think that's fine because these are this is a good combination. And now the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's get into this Wonder Bar. This is really soft. I feel like the chocolate's gonna come off of my fingers, but I wanna crack it open so you guys can see the inside if you haven't seen one of these before, like me. Oh, okay, so it's crunchy peanut butter. And then there's caramel on the sides and the bottom. How'd they do that? And of course, it's all wrapped in chocolate. So this should be pretty delicious. Let's give it a taste. It's really good. The chocolate on the outside, it is really soft. It's sort of like flaking off, as you guys can see. I don't know if that's because it's older or if it's supposed to be that way. But the chocolate's good. It's a lighter milk chocolate. The caramel, there's, it seems to be a thin layer of caramel and it adds just a little touch of sweetness. It's not, it's not like sickly sweet caramel that you get sometimes in certain different candies. This is much lighter on that side. And then it's mainly, as you can see, this peanut butter filling, which is crunchy peanut butter. The peanuts have the texture almost of a rice crisp, like you'd find at a crunch bar or a first strike bar, which I wasn't expecting. I was expecting a solid peanut crunch, but that's not what's in here. And the peanuts and the peanut butter, they add just a touch of saltiness, but this is still mainly sweet. 
not overly sweet, but it is sweet and it's a nice touch, a nice dessert to have after this main. Okay guys, that was today's tray tour featuring IMP number 19 beef ravioli. Mike, thanks again for sending this to me. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm gonna finish this off camera now and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.